one of the things that will usually confuse students pertaining to this chapter is the terms diploid, haploid, and also homologous chromosomes. When I'm teaching this chapter, a lot of times students get, they feel like they understand it, but at the same time, they also have some doubts on this chapter. So let's try to understand what these terms mean. Now, if you remember in the previous video, I told you that an organism, I'm just, again, a made up organism, as you can see, it's a blue colored triangle organism. Some students will ask me this question, teacher, what exactly is this organism? I have no idea. It's just an organism, you know, it's just a made up organism, okay? Uh, and if we look at the body cell of the organism, like for example, a skin cell or a muscle cell or whatever, uh, it will have a nucleus and inside the nucleus, it has its chromosomes. And I told you that usually for this chapter, we will represent the chromosomes in their chromatid or coiled form because it's easier to quantify. So as you can see here, what you notice is the chromosomes, uh, there are four chromosomes for this made up organism. Again, remember, different species will have different numbers of chromosomes. I am choosing to represent this organism with four chromosomes inside its body cell nucleus. Okay, so four is not a magic number. For humans, if we were to look at the body cell, how many chromosomes would we find? We would find 46 chromosomes. Okay, but again, we're just choosing four. Now, if you notice those four chromosomes, when you draw it out, the sizes of the chromosomes, number one, they are different, but there is a pair of chromosomes with the same length and the same size, okay, at the top there, and another pair at the bottom. So even though there are four, they exist as a pair. Now, why do they exist as a pair? I will explain that later. But the interesting thing is, I told you in the previous video as well, chromosomes will have genes, and I will represent the genes in a single line. As an example, those two large chromosomes will have a gene for body color each. Now, immediately some students will ask, wait a second, why does the organism have to have two genes for body color? Why can't it just have one gene for body color? Um, there is a reason, again, I'm going to explain that later. And this gene for body color will code for the protein. Remember, genes code for the polypeptide or the protein, which affects our characteristics. So this gene for body color would probably code for the protein, and that protein makes the organism become blue in color, as an example. And for the chromosomes at the bottom, they have genes as well, and those genes are the genes for body shape. Again, it has a gene for the body shape on the chromosome on the left, and the so-called similar length chromosome on the right side, it also has a gene for body shape as well. Again, so this organism has four chromosomes in its body cells, okay, and two genes for body color on each chromosome at the top, and two genes for body shape at the two chromosomes at the bottom. So far, so good. Now, let's take a male parent of this species. Okay, look, it has four chromosomes. And let's take a female parent. Okay, so the female parent, it's the same species, by the way, but the characteristic of the female parent is slightly different. Where I've represented the shape of the female parent to be a square and the color of the female parent to be red. Based on the previous video, I told you before, the offspring has to receive half the genetic information from either parent, all right? Which means to say, see, the offspring here has to receive two chromosomes from the male parent and two chromosomes from the female parent, where when the fertilization of the gametes happen, it becomes four chromosomes again. So come back over here. So obviously the male parent will have to give two chromosomes and the female parent will also have to give two chromosomes so we know that we know that each gamete or sex cell must have the two chromosomes fine now does it matter which two chromosomes the male parent gives or does it matter which two chromosomes the female parent gives like you know is that if i if you notice i'm going to number the chromosomes from the male parent chromosome one two three four and the female parent five six seven eight okay just 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 numbering the chromosomes okay for our lesson here so we know that the male parent has to give two chromosomes the amount of chromosome it has to give is two does it matter which two chromosomes it gives 
Okay, can, can it be a random chromosome like chromosome number one or two or three and four or one and three or two and four or one and four or two or three? And is it also the same with the female parent as well? And now some students will say, no, it doesn't matter which two chromosomes the parent gives. So let's take a situation. The male parent gives chromosomes one and two. That means the gamete has two chromosomes and the female parent gives chromosomes number five and six which also amounts to two chromosomes. So that's so far so good, right? The, the gametes have two chromosomes. Isn't that what we wanted? So let's say the two gametes fuse with each other. What's the problem here? The offspring has four chromosomes, yes, but look at the four chromosomes. All the four chromosomes only contain the genes for body color. It doesn't have the gene for body shape at all. So what will happen to the offspring? The offspring will just be a <laughs> it'll just be a blob of blue with no shape at all whatsoever. Now some students will ask me the question, oh what will happen to the offspring then? Will it form? Under most circumstances, the offspring will not form. So even if the gametes do fuse with each other, the organism will not have enough information to form the offspring. So eventually the, the zygote will just die off. So in this case, to actually form the offspring, one set of chromosomes must be passed down from each parent. What do I mean by one set of chromosomes? It means that it must contain one chromosome for the gene for body color and one chromosome for the gene of body shape. As an example, chromosome number one and chromosome number three over there. And for the female parent, it also must send down one chromosome with the gene for body color, which I've represented as chromosome number six, and one chromosome which contains the gene for body shape, which is chromosome number eight. So it's one large chromosome and one small chromosome that needs to be passed down. So that when it forms the offspring, the offspring will contain the adequate genetic information to actually uh, form the offspring. So the offspring will have genes for body color to give it a body color, which is blue in this case, and genes for body shape, which gives it the square shape as an example. Okay, right here. That is why each organism usually has two genes for body color and two genes for body shape because it receives one gene for body color from the male parent and one gene for body color from the female parent and one gene for body shape from the male parent and one gene for body shape from the female parent. Right there. That is why we usually have two copies of the gene even though it's the same type of gene, gene for body color. That is the reason, because we have two parents, okay? So what does this have to do with haploid and diploid? Well, if we were to look at this organism over here again, okay, one chromosome which contains the gene for body color and one chromosome which contains the gene for body shape is defined as one set of chromosomes, one complete set of chromosomes that needs to be passed to the offspring. One set of chromosome is referred to as haploid. But look at this organism over here. This organism has two sets of chromosomes, right? As I've circled in the dotted lines. So because this organism has two sets of chromosomes, we will refer to this organism as diploid. So the diploid, by definition, just means two sets of chromosomes. But when you look at the gamete, the gamete only contains one set, which is going to be passed to the offspring. And by that definition, that is called haploid where this cell has one set of chromosome. That is what's the meaning of diploid and haploid. Diploid just means the cell or the organism has two sets of chromosomes and haploid just means the cell has one set of chromosome. And the diploid number is usually referred to as 2n. It's just a symbol that we use. And what's the diploid number? How many chromosomes make up the diploid number? Four chromosomes, as I've ticked over there, we have four chromosomes. The diploid number of the organism is four. Therefore, the haploid number, which is n, represented as n, equals to four divided by two, where you have two chromosomes. Simple as that. But if you're still not so sure, let's try this again. I'm going to make up another made-up organism where you have a flying cat. And this flying cat over here, as an example, let's see. How many chromosomes do you have here? You have 
six chromosomes and if you look at the chromosomes i've highlighted those chromosomes are all different how do i know those chromosomes are different their sizes are different and they also have different genes at different positions for example the chromosome at the top it has a gene at the up at the upper part the chromosome at the bottom has a gene at the lower part of the chromosome and the chromosome at the lowermost part it has two genes okay so that's how you know those chromosomes are different those three chromosomes which i've highlighted make up one set Okay, some students will ask, can I assign the sets randomly as well? You may. For example, if I highlight the green, green, and for the fun of it, just highlight the green one on the right side, that also is defined as one set of chromosome. Therefore, the other highlighted ones in purple becomes another set of chromosomes. So, in this case, this flying kitty has two sets of chromosomes. And because this flying kitty has two sets of chromosomes, it is a diploid organism because two sets of chromosomes is diploid. When this kitty produces a gamete, the gamete will only contain one set of chromosomes and one set of chromosomes is referred to as haploid. So what's the diploid number? The diploid number is 6 and the haploid number is 3. Again, coming back to this organism over here, if you were to look at this pair of chromosomes, which I've circled in a dotted line, those two chromosomes are referred to as homologous chromosomes. The definition of homologous chromosomes just means that they have the same length, okay, obviously, the same position of the centromere, and they also have the same gene loci. Loci just means the position of the gene. What do I mean by the position of the gene? Very simple. If you were to see it in these two identical chromosomes of the same length and same position of centromere, let's say the chromosome on the left has a gene called gene A. Okay, gene A codes for something. Don't care. If I were to look at the homologous pair on the right side at that same exact position, I will be able to also find gene A. And for example, if I find gene B in that position, the same homologous pair, gene B. Gene C, gene C on that side as well. So that is what is meant by homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes are chromosomes, a pair of chromosomes. They are always a pair, by the way. There are some exceptions, but under normal circumstances, they exist as a pair of the same, a pair of chromosomes of the same length, same position of centromere, and same gene loci. Okay, let's put it all together. Now, I'm drawing out an otter over here. Again, this otter as an example. I'm just representing this otter to have how many chromosomes in total? Eight chromosomes in total, which I've... I'm, and I'm naming the chromosomes as chromosome A, chromosome B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And those green lines represent the genes, okay, on the, each chromosome. So, list out one set of chromosomes. Some students will say, oh, one set of chromosome is A, C, E and G. And also another set of chromosomes is B, D, F and H. Some students will also ask the questions, uh, can it be, a, I don't know, maybe a different set? Okay, can I, can I just say um, maybe one set of chromosome is A, D, E, H? Yes, you may. Is it B, C, F, G? Yes, you can. Those also refers to as one set of chromosomes as well. Okay, one set of chromosomes is just the set that needs to be passed down to the offspring. But this otter over here has two sets of chromosomes. A, C, E, G makes one set. B, D, F, H makes one set. Therefore, this otter is a diploid organism. Simple as that. Now, what if we wanted to say homologous pairs? Which are the homologous pairs? Obviously, it is A and B. They are a homologous pair. Same length and same position of centromere. Also, same gene positions, right? Represented by those green lines. C, D are a homologous pair. E, F are homologous pairs. G, H are also homologous pairs as well. The diploid number of this otter will be 8. Two sets of chromosomes equals to 8 chromosomes. And the haploid number of this otter n equals to 4, which is half of it. So I hope you do understand what is the meaning of diploid, haploid, and also homologous chromosomes.